Hey guys, Dirty Jamie here. Uh, we got a big old piece of meat. We're gonna do some grilling. And I have a rotisserie for my amazing uh, Gravity Series charcoal, charcoal grill. This is a big piece of meat. And uh, I'm gonna switch the video around and let you see me unwrapping it here. So this was one of the cuts that came from my quarter beef. I buy my beef in bulk whenever I can. A little bit of blood in here. We'll have some cleanup to do, but I'll try to drain it off. It's not much. But fortunately, my butcher already wrapped the twine on it. That's going to help a lot with our rotisserie process. Okay, you guys, I'm not a pro griller, but my grill is amazing and it makes me look like a good griller. I see a little bit of silver skin here, but I trust my butcher. Um, if they thought that needed to come off, they probably wouldn't have wrapped it in twine yet. Um, I'm a little slow on the thawing out, um, but I'm going to marinate it and that might help. I'm just going to fork a bunch of holes. I'll do that right now. We're just going to stab the shit out of this thing so some of that marinade can get inside of there. Both sides. Okay guys, so this recipe uh, for the marinade, really oh. interesting. It takes... <coughs> Doggies, shut up. I'm trying to make a video. It takes a, a can of beer. Um, it says one and a half cups, which is a can, 12 ounce beer. Um, I chopped some <coughs> garlic. There's a whole bunch of... <laughs> whole bunch of ketchup, mustard. Um, it asks for, uh, by the way, this Dijon, that's what it called for. Uh, there is some balsamic vinaigrette in it. It calls for three tablespoons of chili powder. That's a lot of chili powder. I didn't even have chili powder, but I have all the things that make up chili powder. So what I've done already is I put in some cayenne pepper and some paprika, both ingredients of chili powder, uh, ground cumin. So I'm just kind of eyeballing my own little blend here. I am not putting in as much as they say. Here's some oregano, also in chili powder. And onion powder. So like I said, I have almost all the ingredients for that. This is a brand new onion powder, so give me a second. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want it to be super spicy, but the recipe sounded really good, so. We're, we're going for a little spice, a little spice, a little seasonings. And, oh, that's a lot of that onion powder. But that onion powder is not hot. That won't hurt it. So this is a really <laughs> interesting marinade. I don't think I've ever made a marinade. I poked the shit out of this, by the way. So uh, we're just going to blend this beer and the mustard and ketchup, garlic, uh, balsamic vinaigrette, and my blend of chili powder. And then we're just gonna get a gallon Ziploc and put that piece of meat in there and dump this in with it. And it's gonna set for a few hours. I'm a little behind on what I wish I had ready. Like they say to marinate for 12 hours or more. I'm gonna get it in there for probably six. Uh, the one cool thing I noticed is if I was to smoke this piece of meat, they recommended like six, seven hours. But on the rotisserie, I can turn the temperature up and it goes much quicker because one thing I've noticed is that a rotisserie, it really keeps the juices on the meat. You know, they want to drip off, but they just keep running around and it keeps it nice and, and moist. It doesn't dry out quite as much as smoking when you're smoking, whether you're doing ribs or a, a big piece of meat. You gotta keep it lubed up, whether you're putting salsa on it, which sounds weird for some people, but I learned that salsa is a great way to keep your meat nice and moist, and the tomato acid helps break down those tough pieces, those tough cuts as well. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I had bought the rotisserie accessory for my master-built 800 Gravity Series charcoal grill, and if you guys don't know about it, just 
Google it, look it up. It is amazing. If you're thinking of a Traeger, explore this option. Like, it'll do everything a Traeger does and then some. And, and not quite as expensive. It's not a cheap grill, that's for sure. I think I paid $600 for it, but an equivalent Traeger would be probably over 1000 So uh, we've got this all blended up. It's actually looking very thick. Notice my un, uh, untidy table here. <laughs> so then the next step is put this sucker in a bag and I tell you what guys, I got really lucky. I tested it, zipping it, it just barely closes. But uh, I'm just gonna hold it open like that and dump this uh, this marinade in there. Looks so amazing. Like this is fancier than I usually get when it comes to cooking. And I might make a mess, but that's why I got it in the sink. And everything fits. Um, I'll set the camera aside here, you can watch me try to zip this puppy up. I'm also going to try to squeeze the air out of it if I can. Dan, you notice I'm not the typical YouTuber. I didn't even clean the kitchen. But, yeah, just almost have to tuck it in a little bit. Try not to break my bag here. That would not be good. Although I'll probably just leave it here in the sink to marinate. Or, you know what, I might take it out so I can do my dirty dishes. Okay, there we go. We've got that almost all zipped and I'm just trying to squeeze the last little bit of air out and there oh yeah I think I am going to um, just find a pan to put this on um, it already leaked just a little bit right here by the zipper that's okay I'll just try to keep that up but I'm gonna maybe just sit it on a cookie sheet so uh, there we go I have put it in the bottom of the broiling pan and this broiling pan is also going to dub for uh, my water underneath when we start doing the rotisserie. I'll put some water in here. That's going to steam as it's ro in rotating in the rotisserie. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm going to check out for a bit, let this sit for a few hours while I clean house, much needed. And uh, we'll fire up the grill maybe around 2 this afternoon. Right now it's, it's early. I woke up early. I work early. It's about 6.30 a.m. Okay, so I spared you the taking it out of the bag and putting it on the, the rotisserie. Uh, let's power that puppy on. And there we go. It's rotating. We got a little bit of water in there. We're heating up um, 65. It started at like 41, so it's heating up nicely. And uh, we'll get back to you a little later. I think once it gets to temp, I'll set the timer for two hours. Um, maybe an hour and a half. So sometimes if you let this grill sit for a month or two, uh, the charcoal seems to absorb just the outside moisture. I mean, it's raining right now, but once you get it to 100 degrees, it skyrockets up. We're going to see a lot of smoke coming off this puppy after 300 degrees because the last thing I did was smoke some ribs for six hours. So it's got all kinds of sticky, yummy goodness in there that's going to smoke off. And actually, I think that's going to be a good thing. Once it hits 400, I'll set the timer for an hour and a half. Timer on this is great. You just hit this point and, and set it. So another thing I love about this uh, grill is the app. You, it's Wi-Fi. I could be driving away from home and change the temperature from here. Uh, it's close enough right now. We're going to set time. I just click set time. One hour and 30 minutes. Like so. Confirm. Boom timer is set it'll give me an alert when an hour and a half is up so we're fully up to temp now uh, 399 it'll fluctuate a little but it holds really well and you see all that smoke coming off that this is what I want to call the self-cleaning mode um, yeah it's got some grease and stuff burning off in there from the last time I smoked some meat and anyway, so the charcoal sits in here. It's lit at this point. There's a fan that, that blows air in under here, up through and into the grill. So it's, it's non-direct heat. And it's digitally controlled by that fan right here. And you just make sure that that hopper's full. It'll last four hours at least. If you need to add charcoal, you want to turn the temperature down, open the lid, let it cool off to about 
250 or less and then you can fill the hopper up and keep it going but it holds plenty for what we're doing today okay so i didn't give a lot of progress updates during the rotisserie but uh it took a little longer than i thought maybe almost yeah i, th I think i ran it for three hours i don't know two and a half then an hour and a half added a half hour added a half hour my pan ran out of water i added some but i didn't keep close enough eye on it and it got a little charred but to me that's gonna be good I got it up to at least 150 degrees inside and uh, let me uh, slice it open all right so I'm just gonna cut the twine off of it I don't see why I shouldn't and oop oop bump the camera sorry man lots of juices I'm gonna make a mess but the dogs are here ready to lick it up <laughs> if I spill some juice Should have put both my gloves on, I guess. Well, I can't wait anymore. Let's just let's just take a slice off of this puppy. Let's take a big old cut. See what she looks like. Feels a little tough in the middle. I'm kind of got my finger. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just a little bit of pink. The juice is running out of this slice. Hmm. I cannot wait guys so I just caught my cut myself off a proper chunk oh yeah oh yeah it doesn't fall apart like ribs but it, it it's still tender it's it's coming apart just fine like it's not tough mmm Ooh. gosh maybe I'm gonna try so many things this is a big piece of meat I'm gonna try horseradish I'm gonna try barbecue <laughs> sauce I'm gonna try to make a stew with it fantastic thanks for watching like and subscribe love y'all